My vocabulary investigation this week led me to learn that the word ambulance is rooted in the Latin word ambulare, meaning to walk. Now, I know it seems strange to think of something we now associate with speed being described as walking, but the word originally referred to the contraption known as a walking hospital. How fascinating. So let's see what other things our vocabulary detectives dig out for us in this episode coming up. Lisa, I've got some really exciting news. Are you ready? Are you ready? We've got another detective with us this episode. (laughs) I'm excited. I want to introduce you and all of our listeners to the wonderful Anne Wassell. Hello, Anne. Lovely for you to join us. Hello. Hello. I'm very excited. It's lovely to be here. So just (laughs) before we start digging into all of the things we dig into in terms of vocabulary and the words we use every day, can you just um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Anne, and and your love of words and language? Uh, Well, Sarah, I'm... I, I live in a very special place. I live in Stratford-upon-Avon, which obviously is Shakespeare's birthplace. And he is, as we all know, the great wordsmith. So how could I not love words? It would be a criminal offence here in Stratford <laughs> if you didn't like words. My so, favourite uh, Shakespearean word is flippity-gibbet. Oh, <laughs> lovely, isn't it? Word, it's isn't lovely. It? Flippity-gibbet. It's I think lovely. I, I was definitely a flippity-gibbet as a child. Um, <laughs> that so um, this week... We're going to be looking at another word stem. No, I'm fibbing to you. We're not our Lisa this week. We're not looking at a stem. You've chosen a, a different slant for us. Yeah, prefix this week. Oh, so before Pre- we go any further then, could you just remind us sort of the difference between prefix, suffix and stems yet again, just until it's totally stuck? Yeah, absolutely. So prefix, you normally find at the beginning of the word, carries meaning. Suffix, normally at the end of the word, again, carries meaning. And stem, kind of where the root word has stemmed from and it it often lends an awful lot of of understanding to to the word itself. So they not only change the meaning of the word that they're applied to, but they carry meaning. And that's what we're looking at and and how we learn these. It helps us to grow our vocabulary. Fab. So before we move on to this week's prefix, I was wondering if you fancied giving our Anne, our new vocabulary, her first test. I'll take her through her paces. No, you'll breeze through these. And so we've looked at some... um, some stems and prefixes already in previous episodes. So we've looked at um, Greg. So mm-hmm. what's Greg? What does Greg mean? Oh, Greg, Greg. Um, this is a good one, isn't it? Because um, my mind goes to all sorts of things with, with, with this and uh, things like gregarious. I think actually, I think you, you did mention gregarious and congregation in a previous yeah. episode of the podcast. Um, but it means to, to flock or to crowd or to, or to group. Um, yeah. So uh, a good word that you actually explored was um, anti segregationist. Was that right? Is that right? Is that yeah, what that's, 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 what, that's yeah. the one I, I threw at Lisa last week. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely. That's got Greg right in the centre of it, hasn't it? So, so am I right? Is that what it means, Lisa? Crowd or flock? Absolutely. What about track? We've looked at track as well in a previous one. Ah, oh, track. Um, to drag or to pull. So, as in uh, tractor or intractable or abstract. Abstract's a lovely one for that. Yeah, that's a it? nice word. So, yes, drag, drag or pull. Brill. Okay. Um, so that's a couple that we've done, but what's the one we're doing this week, Sarah? We're doing com this week. So we're going to look okay. at the prefix com this week. Before we go any further, mm. I'm not convinced Anne doesn't have a challenge for you. I know Anne always has a really awesome word up her sleeve because when we're in meetings, she throws them at oh, me no. all the time. Oh, <laughs> so dear, before, right. you, you're not off the hook this, this early in the game, Lisa. So, oh. Anne, come on, what, what are you going to wow Lisa with this morning? Well, well, I don't know whether it's it's a wow. It is actually related to one of the words you did in a, a previous episode, Lisa. So, so don't 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 fear. Um, and I've got to get my tongue around it. So here we go. Um, ultra segregationists. Ultra. So ultra is above or beyond, like in ultrasonic. So we talked about segregationists, didn't we? Um, meaning to um, to separate a group or a um, or a, a flock of. No, do you know what? I've, stu- I've stumbled seg, too we're many. About seg, seg being cut, weren't we? Because you then went down that crazy route with incisor and scissors and um, Ooh, so yes, seg being yes. to cut or to remove. So above, our, so is it? Ist is a person, person who I think that keep telling me if I'm wrong, like um, scientist, 
um, I was going to say astronomist. Is that even a word? If not, it is now. Um, Greg, schön that result and process. So a person who's in the process of going beyond splitting people away. <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. So, so being ultra in that way might be from a political point of view. I mean, in history, we've got cases in war zones and, and, and politics um, of definite ultra segregationists, haven't we? So, you know, in political leaders. Um, so that might be where it, where it could be used but it's it's a great word but it's a bit difficult to get your tongue around i have to say it is, it is difficult. maybe that's one of our challenges is trying to think about the, the the longest words we can think of that you can morphemically and analyze without too much bother that will be a, that will be an interesting concept so this week we've said that this session we're going to be looking at the prefix com now lisa i i think you've chosen this because it's got quite a few variants is that right yes yeah, so i've chosen com and i think it's probably cropped up um in some of the other words that we've we've explored before, but com is together or with. Um, sometimes it can be used um, to show kind of the um, intensive nature of a particular word. But it's quite interesting because depending on the word that you're attaching it to, so the word that you're adding that prefix to, um, it can change the spelling pattern of it. So you've got com, you've got co, you've got col. Um, can even be cog as well. So um, quite often, if the root word begins in a, a vowel, then it's reduced to core. But then, it, it depend if the word begins with an L, for example, it'll take the col form. So it's quite an interesting one to look at because sometimes the letter pattern can change, but crucially, the meaning is always retained. So let's have a start to think about some words then. So if I th I, th I throw the first one out and then I'm going to let you two just take over because I think you two have got this to do. So if we look at the first one together, so let's try and think of something a little bit maybe simple to start us off with. So what about combination? What does it mean and how do we know combination? Go on then, and who's going who's gonna to oh, tackle okay, this one? Okay, okay. I'd, uh, shun. Don't we love shun? I mean, it's, 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 it's a real popular one. And actually, um, am I right in thinking, Lisa, that shun can be S-I-O-N and it still means still means yeah. the same? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, so we know that that's the actual result um, of, or process of something. Um, so combination, the actual result process, the, the middle bit, I think, it, it, is that the stem coming from sort of bind? So it's yes. binding. And then we know, don't we, that um, com means together and with. So it's actually bringing and binding something. It's the process of binding something together and bringing something together. Um, so, you know, I suppose we're a combination of podcastists, aren't we, really? <laughs> well, po podcastists, a, that was our new job title from the other episode, uh, yes, wasn't it? So, yeah. so, so I heard, Sarah, so I heard. <laughs> uh, yeah, so combination, the act result of process of binding and connecting things together, brilliant. Or mixing things up, sometimes when we think about the context, don't we? We think about things being combined, I'd like, I'd like mixing something up. Um, all right, I think this one's quite tricky, but see, see what you reckon. Comfortable. Ooh. Comfortable is, is an odd one, isn't it? Because you think of comfortable, meaning like cozy and soft and fluffy and all of those kind of images or, or words come into your head, but um, it's rooted in fort, which, which means strength. Um, so to bring strength, the process of bringing strength to something. Um, so it's quite, it's quite an interesting one when you look at it morphemically. Um, but if you, you know, if you've got comfort, it's because you've got all of the strengths coming together. Yeah, I suppose if you're comforting somebody, you're giving them your strength in order yeah, to make them feel, feel better, aren't they? Yeah, brilliant. That's a lovely yeah. one. I also, I also think words like that are a bit tricky because you don't necessarily acknowledge the prefix as being that prefix because, like you said, you, we're almost like some words are so much in our vocabulary anyway that we don't even think about that them needing any kind of like diagnosis. Yeah, if you think about the word nonsense or repair, those are two that I, or mistake, they're the ones that, that I think are exactly that point. You use them every day and you don't, you see them just as the word, you don't really see them as, because they're not long words, but yeah. you know, yeah. to repair, you pair something again. If, if something's nonsense, it's not sense. sense. Um, what about mistake then in that instance? Well, miss is bad or wrong. So you've made a ba bad or wrong take of something. Oh. See, see, investigation, love it, love it, fascinating. Right, and another one for you. What about disconnect? 
disconnect. Actually, this is a good example of what we're saying about mistake, isn't it? We don't, you know, we don't think of being able to morphemically analyse um, these words that are common, common words. But actually, we can do that, obviously. So, so dis, um, dis meaning a, a, a way or, or reverse or, or not, um, and, and, and connect, um, the act of co connecting to something, uh, bringing something together. So disconnect is actually the opposite to connect, isn't it? It's actually um, uh, pulling something away from its connection. Uh, so if I disconnect a plug, I'm pulling the plug away from the connection and the connection with the electricity. Um, so so that's, that's a really good example like mistake of a, a very common word that we would use in everyday language um, but have we paused and thought about its meaning in in its component parts and how that will relate to other other words so how many other dis words can can we think of um, so uh, yeah it's interesting in that way Sarah isn't it actually? it's also how interesting we can... like we've, we you were saying there about the importance of knowing things like what dis means because, you know, we've spoken, haven't we, about how when you're building your vocabulary, be it whether you're a child or, or a grown-up, you're not going to always immediately know the whole word in itself. But actually knowing that what dis means or knowing what con means, it allows you to get yourself out of that pit. It allows you to get some sort of just understanding so you can get through a, a passage you might be reading or something you might be listening to on the TV. It's really important. I just think it's really, really important. The final con, before we move on to some other bits and pieces that we're going to earn our game, we're going to play. Um, I really love this word, and I'm, but I'm struggling with it. So concentric. Oh, it's a lovely word, that one, isn't it? Concentric. Takes me back to, yeah, concentric circles in maths. I never yes. understood it. Um, but if my teacher had done it, <laughs> done that morphemic analysis, I would have done. So we, we've, we've talked about con, same as com, together or with. Um, and then you've got that centric, so relating to the, the, the central point. So concentric circles are circles which have that shared center point. So if you throw, if you throw a pebble into a, into a body of water, and the ripple effects, they're, they're examples, aren't they, of concentric circles. So it's quite, quite an interesting one. I always think there's a TV show in the 80s that they used to have concentric circles in the theme tune at the beginning. And whenever I'm teaching this word, I always remind myself of that, that strange oh. TV show. I don't know why. It's where my brain... We're going to do a TV show at the end, so stay tuned, everybody. <laughs> and speaking about like difficult things and, and, and things having those kind of ripple effects, Lisa, I know last time we all got together, we spoke about my crazy love of the word ensconced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know, as I've been investigating my words this week and I came across my meaning of ambulance you also went away and you've got yourself all yeah um, I, in, in, ensconced in the word ensconced <laughs> yeah when because when you put that word to me I was like oh right okay and and then I you know I I knew what the word meant obviously we talked about that but then I kind of worked around it but it kind of just I couldn't let it go so I went away and I looked it up and and like we again, like we've spoken about, it kind of took you in this huge kind of web of words. So when you look at it, um, and sconce, uh, sconce is that candlestick with a screen. Um, so that the that was designed so that it hid, it concealed the um, the flame of the of the candle, which was really important. It comes from absconcer, so to hide because it was hiding the light. Um, and during that kind of investigation, it's there where abscond comes from, um, ab, away from, um, and then conde, meaning to put or to store. So it just kind of took me down this real rabbit warren. Um, but that is the beauty of, of morphemically analysing words. So I just, it, it was something that I didn't know. So I thought, oh, that's why I mentioned it to you. Found it, found it, it fascinating. It, I mean, I, I think that's absolutely fascinating. I know all of us at Lexonic do, but Anne, in your teaching, did you see a real benefit of taking students through this, this process we're speaking of? Oh, absolutely, Sarah, absolutely. Because actually by doing so, you're giving them the skill and the tools and, and the know-how to actually independently go and explore words and, and look at words and find meaning within the words and not to be 
frightened or, or fearful or stuck when they come across a word they don't know because they've got the means to be able to get out of that learning pit that we, we, we talk about um, by becoming battle ready to be able to uh, encounter any new word. So even if it's not a, a word that we're presenting as a teacher to them, that they come across in another way, perhaps in an examination that they, they have never seen before, they've got the means to be able to analyze it to try to get themselves out of it by being able to give it a really good go at finding out the meaning of a word they've never seen before so yes absolutely crucial I think I love that idea of, of making sure everybody's battle ready I absolutely adore that I often think about like you know having a really good grasp and a strong grasp of vocabulary is just like filling up our toolkit so when a plumber comes around to fix your toilet and they open the back of their van they've got everything they need haven't they to do any possible job they might not use that spanner for this particular job but it's there for when they need it and i think that's the thing about literacy and reading and vocabulary it's about making sure that we're helping ourselves and our children and our our partners and loved ones equip themselves so that their toolkit is rampacked full of the things that they might need in the future. Um, so some of the other things then, what are some of the other tips that we could be giving any of our listeners about how to expand um, children or people in general's vocabulary? I think it comes down to making it habitual. So making this another thing, like you said, your toolkit, making this something else that you are just in the habit of doing. And it, it can be to the frustrations of students but if they ask you what a word means, well, what do you think it means? Is there a part of the word that you recognize? Is there, a, is there a prefix that you've come across before? Making it just so that you're not just simply supplying the definition. Um, because the definition is important, obviously at the time, that's why they're asking you. But how you arrive at that definition is, is much more important. So just making that kind of exploration and, um, habitual, I think, is important. And I, suppose, no, I, I, I would agree with that. Yes. And that process, isn't it? That, that, that process becomes something that they then will do it before they, they ask. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they, 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 you're removing the need for that support all of the time. They can, they can look at words independently, um, which Anne touched on there. I also like just the really simple things like, you know, if, if, if your child comes up to you and you, you're, you're cooking or whatever and they want to go and play out with their mates, um, and they might just say, I don't know, or, or mum, I'm going for a walk. I just think really simply just re just responding to that with, a, oh, yeah, a little amble sounds good. So like, <laughs> yeah. I know, like that sounds really pretentious, yeah. but, but just giving them, letting them hear, letting their ears take in that, that new word. You don't yeah. need to then define it because they, you've done the connection for them because their brain will then make that connection between, oh, I said walk, mum said amble. Oh, it must mean the same yeah. thing. It's Sorry to interrupt there, Sarah. No. I was going to say, especially, I mean, I know your daughter and I know that she likes to read, but that's especially important if you think about students who don't read, who aren't reading for pleasure at home. So they're not being exposed to those kind of, they're not having the opportunity to encounter those synonyms. You know, if, you know, we know, we all enjoy reading. I can, I know we do. So sometimes we can read a book and think, oh, never never heard that word before but obviously using context I know I know what it means and yeah. or I can analyze it so I, I think, think it's even more important I think about the context clues and what have you spoke about in a previous episode as well about you know read you know reading around finding what's where the hidden clues are within a sentence that you're reading and all those sort of things are super important and what about yourself what what are the things you think are just just simple things to do to extend people's vocabulary well, actually, I mean, you, you sort of touched on it with what you've just been discussing now. I think it's incredibly important and not to underestimate um, using speech and, and vocabulary orally. So, so, so we talk about reading, don't we? We talk about reading an awful lot and, and it's absolutely crucial and very, very important. Um, but something you can easily do on a day-to-day -day basis is, is orally explore vocabulary. Um, so don't underestimate that because um, a, a student or a child has to be exposed to that word orally. Um, it, our research tells us something like at least six times before it starts to go into long-term memory, before they start to recognize it. So that word that you mentioned there, Sarah, amble, you know, to say it in that sentence is great, but whilst you're ambling um, on that walk, it might be worth mentioning it again a couple of times. So what are we doing? Oh, we're going for an amble. It's lovely ambling around the countryside, isn't it? You know, and so on and so forth. So, so that actually you, that repetition 
is, is really imp important and, and exposure because that enables the student then to, uh, or, or your child, to recognize that when they hear it again from somebody else and then they start to actually speak it themselves. It's a bit like when we first start learning a language or indeed we have our first exposure to language when we're, when we're babies, is that you start to understand the language before you start speaking it. So if you've got to hear that language, you've got to hear that vocabulary before you can start practically using it yourself, before you can go on your next walk and when your friend says, shall we go for a walk? You go, yes, it'd be lovely to go for an amble because you know, I know my mum mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be class, wouldn't it? I can just imagine it, my little girl Amy now saying that. Actually, <laughs> where, do, where do we sit in terms of like all good old school, old fashioned word games? Love them. Oh well, they, I mean, there's like you know things like snap, isn't there? I mean, oral snap would be good, wouldn't it? So if I say walk, what do you say? Amble. <laughs> then, then if you say amble, what do I say? Hike. You know, yeah. you know that sort of like you know backwards. It's not quite snap, is it? But it's backwards and forwards with uh, those words. <laughs> You know, you know why she's saying, you know, you know why she's leading with that, Anne, though, don't you? Yes, I do, unfortunately. Because something's coming up now. <laughs> yes, there is. There's that time of the show, ladies, where we're going to do our game. And this week's game, Let the Music Play, is one from my childhood. Now, Lisa, you're far too young to remember this, but Anne, you might remember Saturday morning whack a day. And you might <laughs> How remember. How old are you stressing I am, Sarah? <laughs> Similar age yes, to I me. Yes, I do. I do remember it. <laughs> And Timmy Mallet and his mallet. So we're going to play Mallet's Mallet affixes. Okay, dokie. So as Timmy Mallet used to say, um, you mustn't pause, you mustn't hesitate. I'm going to say a word to you and you must say the first word that launches out of your head that includes that affix. Okay, dokie. Um, he used to say, look at each other and go, blah. Look at your audience and go, blah. And we're going to get started. <laughs> okay, so Mallet's Mallet, I'm going to give you an affix, so it might be a prefix, a suffix, or a stem. And this is a dead easy game you can play around your dinner table. And all you're going to do, bounce off each other, and the first person to pause or hesitate gets a bonk on the head. Oh, <laughs> I, can't look at, I can't look at Anne. I've got to look away. No, I've got to this concentrate. Is, this is frightening. Are you ready? So, Anne, we're going to Who's going, going first? Anne. Anne's gonna, she's our okay. guest, Lisa, so she has oh, to go Oh, come first. on. Right. So, Anne, I'm going to start with you first. And the first affix is com. Com. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's a good start, well, isn't right, it? Right, start I was going to say, that's a hesitation. <laughs> that's a hesitation. hesitation. Uh, uh. Comprehend. <laughs> Combine. Compensate. Combust. Commit. Compost. Compass. Uh, commemorate. Uh, you, you hesitated. Uh, it's a hesitation. <laughs> oh! Yeah, so there's one. Right, one, no, okay. One okay. nil to the guest. I'll be a one gracious loser. Are you ready, Lisa? We're going to do a suffix, and the okay. suffix is ist. Scientist. Ideologist. Dentist. Biologist. Receptionist. Psychotherapist. Photojournalist. Optimist. Agriculturist. Revolutionist. Hesitation! <laughs> oh, no! Yes. <laughs> Anne is 2-0 up. Oh. Oh, so come on, Anne, you're going to be our resident detective here. Oh, no, here. So, right, here's Absolute a lovely crash. one. A nice new number number one for us. So, Anne, you're starting with the oh, prefix no. cent. Percentile. Century. Tricentenary. Cent oh, <laughs> hesitation. I was going to say, come on, ref. That was a right. hesitation because the teeth weren't in right. I think that was. <laughs> Right, I'm going to put my teeth back in, yes. You're, you're our favourite. It could start with an S, could start with a T, and your suffix is shun. Addition. Situation. Subtraction. Education. Extraction. Operation. Hesitation! <laughs> Why am I so rubbish at this um, game? Your, your brain's obviously working on a different plane, Lisa. You're, you're, you're a bit slow today. Oh. Hey, Anne, you're starting with this one, and it's one we looked at a couple of episodes ago. Lisa's going to have a quick slow for tea, get her brain oh, sorry. going. Are you ready? <laughs> Three, two, one, and it is a uh, stem track. Abstract. Subtraction. Extract. Traction. Contraction. Trachea. Tractor. Contract. Oh, 
is it's Susan. <laughs> well, I was going to say contract and I couldn't remember if someone had said it already. Oh. And you are definitely this week's winner <laughs> of our, our, our resident vocabulary detective has been demoted. Did um, I even win one round? You won one yes, round. Yes, you did. Yes. You did. Oh. You did. Because yeah. you couldn't say a word. You couldn't get it out of your mouth. Yes, that's it. Because oh. I got I couldn't put my teeth back in. I got it by <laughs> default then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, so, thank you very well, much. Is, is that called it. mallet side, Sarah? It is. Yes, you, you mallet mallet side. <laughs> the death, the death, murder, kill via mallet, <laughs> virtual mallet to that as well. <laughs> well, thank you ever so much, um, Detective Lisa and Detective Anne, for this incredible episode of Vocabulary Detectives. Obviously, everybody, please, please tune in to all of our past episodes now available on all of your favourite podcast streaming sites. And next time, join us where we're going to start to explore the STEM duck. Have a great week, everybody, and we'll see you very soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.